Welcome back. Last week, the Government Matters team attended the Navy League's Sea Air Space Conference. My colleague Alan Holmes spoke with Steve Buto, director of the Space Portfolio at the Defense Innovation Unit. Here's a look at that conversation. I'm with Steve Buteau. He's the director of the Space Portfolio at the Defense Innovative Innovation Unit, at, uh, which is part of the Defense Department. Welcome, Steve. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Um, why don't we just start with, um, can you tell me what DIU does and how a space portfolio fits into that? Sure. Uh, in 2015, the Defense Innovation Unit was created by then Secretary of Defense Ash Carter with the idea that we need to accelerate the adoption of commercial technology to help transform our capabilities for the future and build and grow the national security innovation base. So we've, we've been doing that ever since and uh, quite successfully, I would say. That's great. But we'll, we'll get to some of the successes here in a, in a bit. But I was reading about it, and there's something called uh, space as a service. Mm -hmm. and it, it makes me think, it sounds like something, software as a service, um, same Absolutely. initials. Yeah. And uh, if, is, is that right? Everything that the government has in space, it designs it, builds it, and has to sustain it over long periods of time, which is very costly. Commercial companies, just like your cell phone provider, they provide the equipment, they provide the service, and then we just use it, and when we don't need it anymore, we, we turn it off or go to the, the next best service available. So many of the things from imagery, communications, uh, other aspects, delivery, are all being done as a service now in space. Okay. Well, um, it makes me think about you're trying to get commercial technology rapidly into uh, the military services. Yep. You're here at uh, sea, air, and space, so we can talk about the Navy. Sure. Uh, but um, I would think that you would have to have some type of cultural change. And you've been around for five years, yeah. you said. Um, how difficult has that been, the challenges, and how do you mm -hmm. manage that uh, from DIU? It's, it's difficult. Uh, there's always cultural resistance, but we have something in our hip pocket. About 60% of the tactical forces across all the services are between the ages of 16, uh, 18 and 24. Right? Yeah. So the, and th these are people who readily adopt new technology and use those tools smartly. So that they're really the captive audience behind a lot of the things that we work on. Okay, that, that's great. Um, can you tell me some of the, you talk about some of the successes. What, what, what are some of those that, that uh, sure. you've had? Well, you mentioned uh, uh, space as a service. So mm -hmm. we've, we've uh, w before we got started, there were no U.S. companies that made synthetic aperture radar uh, satellites, small satellites. And, so, and what is that? What's a synthetic so it's, aperture it, it, radar? You can do day, night, and all weather okay. monitoring. So right now, if you take a picture with an optical satellite and there's clouds, you'll just see top to clouds. Radar can penetrate that weather. So now if you're the Navy and you want maritime domain awareness, and you just want to know for safety, or you want unclassified information that you can share with your allies, commercial is the best way to go. Okay. And um, so one of the things that also, uh, and uh, you've heard uh, for decades and decades, maybe over 100 years, is that you know the Navy has a tyranny of distance. Yes. Uh, and I would imagine that a lot of the technologies help really shrink that down in some ways. Um, can are there examples of that, or you can talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Well, the space is the best way to tackle that tyranny of distance. Mm -hmm. And um, and what uh, the most ambitious thing in the department today, uh, the uh, joint all domain, you know, uh, command and control system, is to connect everybody globally using space as a backbone, so we can share information. And just as we, uh, whether we watch TV or use our our phones in our pockets. We want that level of, of continuous service available to warfighters. Yeah. Have you been able to apply any of this technology to the uh, COVID pandemic in any way? Absolutely. In fact, uh, uh, this is uh, we have biometric devices. Mm -hmm. This is an Aura Ring and a, uh, a Fenix 6, a Garmin watch, that are collecting bio, my biometric data constantly. We use artificial intelligence to process that data, and, and the companies were able to tell us up to what, 96 hours in advance if uh, somebody has early onset of COVID. Wow. So for the Navy, we've actually fielded on the USS Portland this capability for all their sailors and it's integrated so the captain literally has a uh, check engine light if his, yeah. uh, if his huh. sa sailors are, yeah. are uh, uh, becoming sick. And I would imagine, again, you mentioned, to go back, what, what you mentioned with the, the younger sailors, uh, they probably 
they're fine with this. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they find it pr probably pretty cool. So the, the ability oh, right. to get it to deploy this mm -hmm. has been fairly easy, uh, but, you know. It, it's Absolutely, well, it is, it's a commercial device, so it provides value. It yeah. t tells me I have to work out more. But it's like a I Fitbit. It's, in yeah, a way, it's, it's just like, like yeah, Fitbit, right. yeah, so. Uh, so, and the wonderful thing is, is that it gives us information that improves our readiness and, uh, and uh, just as our satellite imagery and our communications really extend our capabilities uh, in other areas of the world. Yeah. Okay, we only have about uh, 30 seconds or sure. so left, but um, in, in any, any time you talk about technology, cybersecurity comes up. Mm -hmm. So, um, how do you kind of uh, think about that from a management perspective and as you're deploying this technology? I'm sure it's probably something that's front and center, but yeah. how do you kind of um, in, in, integrate all the cybersecurity uh, applications in this technology? Cybersecurity is, is as an evolutionary capability, right? So, it, it can't be static. It's, it's agile, it, and, uh, and the, our industry is the best in the world in, in cybersecurity, so we need to leverage that commercial capability coupled with our great government capabilities to really protect the nation and all of our information. So uh, cybersecurity and trust, just like your bank, uh, you, want, uh, you want to know that when you go to sleep at night, your money is in, a, in an account the next day. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, Steve, thank you so much for, for being with us. It's really interesting. I appreciate well, thank it. Thank you, and okay. thanks for having me. Oh.